All right, Deuterinos, today we are going to be graphing cube root functions. So our main objective is to graph a cube root function by translating our mother function. So we're going to start off the lesson really similar to how we did when we tried to graph square root functions. So I'm going to start first with our basic mother function, the cube root of x. Okay, let's try to figure out what the graph of our mother function looks like. So we're trying to graph y equals the cube root of x. Now we're going to start with just a table of values because whenever we don't know what a function looks like, we can always resort back to this table here because that'll give us actual points that we can plot on our graph. So let's say we try to pick values like negative 2 to 2. Um, now we can plug in negative values for x because when we take the cube root of a negative value, that does produce a real number. Okay, we will get a real number here. Just it's, So it's different than square roots. You just can't take the square root of a negative number, but it does work for cube roots. Um, now, if we try negative 2, though, we're going to have to graph the cube root of negative 2, which is something that's very difficult to graph because we have to find that decimal approximation, and that's not a nice number. So instead, just like when we were dealing with square roots, we're going to pick y values. Okay, So if I want a y output of negative 2 all the way up to 2, then I'm going to solve for x here in this equation to solve for x take the cube of both sides. So we have y cubed is equal to x. So now all we have to do to find what x is, we cube this y value. So if I take negative 2 and I cube it, I get negative 8. If I take negative 1 and I cube it, I get negative 1. 0 cubed is 0, 1 cubed is 1, and 2 cubed is 8. So here are some of the points that are going to lie on the graph of our mother function, y equals the cube root of x. All right, so let's plot these points. We have the point negative 8, negative 2 negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 8, 2. So if I connect these with a smooth curve, you're going to see the general shape of our mother function, the cube root of x. Now for the domain in the range of this function, it's different than the square root function because for our domain, remember, we can have any value uh, of x. Uh, we can have negatives and positives, so we have a domain of all reals. And our range, the output, also will be all reals. You can see that from your table as well. If we increase our x values, the y values are going to continue to increase as well. It's just easier for us, instead of increasing x, it's easier to increase y because to solve for x is much easier. If you just have to cube that number, we get the next point, which would be 27, comma 3. Okay, so um, the only new vocabulary term is this term here, turning point. We don't consider 0, 0 an end point. Uh, we call that a turning point because here you can see the symmetry between your table values. So it's symmetric over the origin, actually, um, which is why this is an odd function. But we won't really get into that. That's more of a pre-calc thing. Um, but you do have a turning point, which is the point 0, 0. Now, based off of this turning point 0, 0, I can find additional points that will lie on that graph of our mother function very quickly. Um, this is a technique that you're going to want to use when we start translating our mother function, this cube root of x. If we translate it, you want to be able to find these points quickly. Okay, Just like in your homework for square root functions, we're going to require you to graph at least, uh, I think, five points is what we would like you to do when it's a cubic function. Or, I'm sorry, a cube root function. When it was a square root function, we asked for three. But for this, we can get five, and you can see these five here. Okay. Now, to get those points, all you have to do is move up one and right one. Then you can move up two and right eight. Now, think of it as it relates back to the fact that we are cubing the value. If we move up one, that's a y value, right? Then to get the x value, we'd have to cube that y value, which is why we're moving right one, because x is, is equal to one. If we want to move up two, that's again a y value, so we would cube the 2 and we get an x value of 8. That's why we move right 8. Okay, And likewise, if I went down, I could go down 1, which is a negative y value, cube it, and you get negative 1, which is why you move left 1. Okay, Again, if I want to move down 2, I'd have to cube that value and I'd move left 8 units because I get a negative 8. So that's how you can quickly find the additional points that would lie on, on your graph. Okay, so let's now apply those ideas here to translating some of these uh, these graphs. So first up, we have y is equal to negative cube root of x. So just like we saw in our previous lesson, that negative out in front is actually a reflection of this graph over the x-axis. So we would take our mother function. So I'm going to draw this one in in red. So this is the general shape of our mother function here. We want to flip this over the x-axis. So I'm just going to show this using symmetry here. That would be my new shape. Okay, so this is the graph of negative cube root of x. Now, as you can see from here, the domain and the range are all reals. And our point here, um, just abbreviated for turning point, is 0, 0. Okay, this is where we still see that, that symmetry where those x, x, y values kind of flip-flop. All right, now, um, if I ask you to find specific values, it's really easy when we give you a grid to graph these because all you have to do is count 
boxes, you would count one over and down one, or left one and up one. You would count down two and over eight to find this additional point. So this point should be eight, negative two. Over here we should have the point negative eight, positive two. Okay, so um, just be aware that you have to graph specific values. And like I said, um, it'll be really easy when you can just count boxes. Um, for the purposes of this video though, I'm just gonna draw really rough sketches and leave off these coordinates. I'm gonna assume that you know how to find them after we find our turning point. Okay, in our next example, we have y is equal to the cube root of x plus three plus five. Now, very similar to what we saw with square root functions, um, when we have a value on the inside of that radical, it's going to shift it horizontally, and it'll shift it in the opposite direction of the sign. So this is actually going to shift it left three units. Okay, The uh, plus 5 on the outside of that radical is going to shift it up five units. So now our turning point is a little bit different. It's no longer 0, 0. Now it's negative 3, 5. So if I want to sketch this, I have my turning point at negative 3, 5. And I know that if I wanted to find additional points, I could go up one and right one, or down one and left one, or up two and right eight, or down two and left eight. I'm not going to bother to find all those specific points for you because you can do that really easily when you have a coordinate grid, but that's the general shape, okay? So as you can see, the domain and range have not been affected at all, even though we've shifted the graph. It's still going to be all reals for the domain and all reals for your range. Okay, in the next example, we have y is equal to the cube root of negative x. So notice here that we have a negative on the inside of the radical. Think back to what, what happened when we graphed square root functions. When we had a negative on the inside of the radical, that was a reflection over the y-axis. So this is going to be no different for this cube root function. We want to reflect it over the y, so I will abbreviate that as flip over the y-axis. So let's graph first our mother function. So here's our mother function the general shape here. And we want to reflect this over the y-axis. So this is going to be our mirror image here. So let's take this portion of the graph and reflect it. So it would look like this. Take this portion of the graph and reflect it. And now it'll look like this. So as you can see, this is the graph of the cube root of negative x, which is actually the exact same as the one above it, right? negative cube root of x. So it's because the symmetry here allows it to be the same. If you were to try to um, take that mother function here, reflect it over the x-axis, and you take that portion here, it becomes this. Take this portion here, and it looks like that. And, and if you do the same thing to the mother function, and reflect it over the y, you get the exact same shape. So the points and everything are going to be the exact same as well, which means that the domain and range should be the same. So our domain here, is all reals, range is all reals, and our point, our turning point, is still 0, 0. Okay, for example D, I would like you guys to try this one on your own. I'm just going to point out, though, that this is going to shift the graph right 4 units as opposed to left 4 units, because again here, if you want to factor out that negative, this is the same as the opposite of x minus 4. So here you can see that it's going to shift it right 4. Um, so go ahead and try to graph this one um, based off of what we did in the last example and check with the key, and we'll move on now to the next example. Okay, in our next example here, we have y is equal to negative cube root of negative x. Now, you have a negative on the outside of the radical. Remember, this is going to be a reflection of your graph over the x-axis, so I'm going to abbreviate that as flip over the x. You also, though, have a negative on the inside of the radical, and that will reflect your graph over the y-axis, so I'll abbreviate that as flip over the y. So when I graph this, I want to start with my mother function as just a template here, so let's do that with dashed lines. So that's what our normal mother function would look like, the cube root of x. Now, I want to flip this over the x-axis. So I would take this portion of the graph, and I'd reflect it over this. This would kind of be the mirror here, the x-axis. So I'd get a portion of the graph that looks like this. And if I reflect this part, part of the graph, it'll look like this. So right now, that's with one reflection. Now, I also want to reflect it over the y-axis. So now this axis here, the y-axis acts as the mirror. So I'm going to reflect this portion of the graph. And look, it's right on top of that old mother function here. If I reflect this portion of the graph, it's right on top of this again. So this would be the final graph for um, negative cube root of negative x. So as you can see, it is the exact same shape as your mother function. Now it's kind of cool when you do that, um, when you do reflection over the x and y, you end up with the exact same graph. So our domain here is going to be all reals, our range is all reals, and our endpoint is still 0, 0. Now I'd like you guys to try f on your own, and in f you're going to see you have a negative on the outside and a negative on the inside, so this should be pretty straightforward to graph after you realize that the reflection here in both the x and the y axis produces the exact same mother function. Okay, let's see if we can draw up some conclusions now from those graphs. Um, when we see an equation of the form k plus the cube root of x minus h, we know that we'll have a turning point at hk. 
the domain and the range are always going to be all reals for our cubic functions. So I would actually like you guys, since this isn't too tough, to fill in the next three sentences on your own and then check with the key. Okay, now let's try to quickly graph the four basic types of uh, cube root functions that you're going to see. So the first one here is just our mother function, so we know what that shape looks like. It's going to be something like that. Now, um, in our second picture here, we have a negative on the outside of the radical. Okay, When that negative is on the outside of the radical, remember that's a reflection over the x-axis. So we want to flip this graph over the x-axis. When we do that, now our function looks like this. Okay. Um, in the next example, we have a negative on the inside of the radical. When the negative is on the inside of the radical, remember this is a reflection over the y-axis, so it'll flip it over the y-axis. But this time, when you graph that, um, it actually looks the exact same as if you were reflected over the x. So these have no difference in the picture, because this looks the exact same. Okay. And then finally, when you have um, a negative on the outside and on the inside, you're doing two reflections, once over the x and then once over the y-axis, which will result in the exact same uh, graph as your mother function. So it looks the same as the cube root of x. Now, what you want to do is make sure you have each of these pictures memorized so that you can quickly graph points, um, your, especially your turning point, and then from there you can use the idea of moving up one left one or down one right one or up two left eight or down two right eight. So you should be able to find and plot very quickly um, your graph. Okay. All right, last but not least in this lesson, um, we are going to be writing equations of irrational functions. So here in number 5 it says write the equation of an irrational function that is a turning point of 3, 5 and a domain of all real numbers. Now the last part of this sentence is, is giving us a huge clue. Um, the fact that it says domain of all real numbers means we cannot use a square root function because remember that one can include negative values. Um, so here we are definitely going to be using a cube root function. That's going to be our irrational function. Now since it's got a turning point of 3, 5, that means we have to adjust our cube root function a little bit. We're going to take that and subtract 3 on the inside of that radical to, to show that we are moving right 3 units. Then we'll add 5 to show that we're moving up 5 units here. Okay. Now the only thing is, I don't really like this notation because if you get sloppy with this, it kind of looks sometimes like the, uh, the 5 is underneath the radical. So I like to write the 5 out in front. So I have 5 plus the cube root of x minus 3. Now in problem 6, it asks us to write a different irrational function that would produce the same exact graph as the um, equation that we have above. Now in this case, I know that this particular function here, if I were to graph this, it'd have a turning point at 3, 5, so somewhere like that, but it'd have the general shape like this. Now if I want to get the same graph but with a different equation, that means I can reflect this twice. I can reflect it over the x-axis and over the y-axis to get that same shape. So that means I put a negative out in front and on the inside of the radical. So if I do that, I have 5 minus the cube root of negative x. Now, I have to adjust the 3, though, because if I keep it as negative x minus 3, this is actually um, saying that you want to shift this left 3. Again, because if you factor out a negative, this is what you would result in, right? Which is not the case. We want to shift it right 3. So we want this sign here to be a negative, which means back here we'd have to make this positive. I hope that makes sense because now if you factor oops, now if you factor out a negative you have at opposite of x minus 3. So that's clearly showing you're shifting it right 3. Um, so that would be our notation that we would use. So we have the equation 5 minus the cube root and then I'm just going to rearrange the order to make it look like the problems that we see. So we have the cube root of 3 minus x. So these two would produce the exact same graph. Different equations that would produce the exact same graph. Now instead of answering the question using um, this particular equation though, you could have used something like y is equal to 5 minus the cube root of um, x minus 3. Okay, now if you had used this, this still has a domain of all reals, it still satisfies the original problem, it's just that when you write your next equation, you would have to make this positive now, so 5 plus the cube root, and then you would make that 3 minus x. So remember these two have the exact same general shape, this is where you're going to see your function look like that and like that. So you get the exact same graph, just different types of equations. So it just depended on how you originally answered the question, but um, these would have to go in pairs here, and these two would have to go in pairs. Alright, that is the end of the lesson. Um, tomorrow you guys are going to get some practice with graphing cube root functions and square root functions put together. So you just have to know the basic differences, and I would definitely recommend that you memorize these four shapes. Alright, nice job. See you tomorrow.